seems like the female tail spikes would just castrate the males, which just rules out our entire rear mount theory. Right. Well, we can keep working on it. Yeah. Well, here's a theory I've been working on. So maybe the female lays down on her side like this, and he rears up over her like this. Well, what happens to that leg? Does it just snap off? No, she would just adjust. Hank, the hips don't move that way. You have to think about it from the female's perspective. I do think about the female. Okay. I think about the female. A few studies have cited that alternate variations on the missionary could work, like this here. So that's nice. Yeah, but... He weighs so much, his legs are so little. I don't think he's getting back up again after that. Okay, but how about if they were mounted somewhere against like a wall? Sex against a wall? Well, a, a tree or something, you know what I mean. <laughs> that is an adventurous theory coming from you. Well, tell me about your favorite theory, Hank. What is it, sex in the water? Yeah, well that would deal with the weight problem, you know, and they'd be able to be buoyant, to be close enough to pair. Sex in the water is not that fun. It's very difficult to lubricate. Well, maybe not every time. You know, just like special occasions, like they're on vacation or something. Maybe they just don't do it the same way over and over and over and over again. How about we go back to one of your little theories? We've got the male behind the female, but he doesn't get castrated by her tail spikes because... Oh yeah, here we go again with the six foot penis. I'm just saying it's not impossible, Hank. Who has a six foot penis? Nobody in your family. What does that even mean? And why would I want a six foot penis? <laughs> I mean, it would be useless. It would be a nightmare. Uh, I would be a pariah. I got it. The male, he digs himself a hole, okay? He digs himself a hole. He lies in it upright. The female comes over. She jumps on him and she just starts pounding him, pounding him, pounding him until she gets off and then she eats him. She eats him for dinner. And then she has enough strength to last her through the winter without him. They're vegetarians. You know that. Maybe they made exceptions. You know what I think? I think she willed the plates onto her back just to have an excuse not to have sex. Oh, it's her fault. Well, he's rock hard and ready to go every single night. You know why? Because he's been listening to Mr. and Mrs. T-Rex next door. And they've been going at it. And they've been scratching at each other and just going wild. They are not having sex, Hank. They are fighting. They're having sex. They're fighting. Uh, I've seen them through the window. What if the Stegosauruses never went extinct, huh? What if they just decided that they grew tired of each other and they were ready for other sexual partners like the nice Brachiosaurus from across the street who's tall and sweet and doesn't lay all over the leather couch without his clothes on? Oh yeah, good luck with that. Wait till he finds out. It takes two hours for her to You know what, Hank? You and me, we're extinct. No, I wanted to say that. That was gonna be my line when I broke up with you. I'm taking this. That's my dinosaur. Mine now. So, no one actually knows how Stegosaurus had sex? Nobody knows! No! Is the thing about the T-Rexes next door gonna be on the test?